Hey everyone, it's Carrie. Welcome to my brand new channel, Carrie's Thrifty Farmhouse. If you like decorating on a budget, you're definitely in the right place. I'd like to start out by thanking my existing subscribers, and if this is your first time stopping by, please be sure to introduce yourself so we can connect. Today I'm creating three pieces that will fit well into any holiday decor, and I'm really excited about all three, so let's just jump right in. For the first project today, you will need one of the round mirrors, skewers, red and black paints, and embellishments of your choosing. I used evergreen garland, white and gold berry garland, and burlap ribbon today, all from Dollar Tree. Start out by popping the mirror out. This is really easy as it's just like glass in a picture frame. Then use skewers to make spokes for the wagon wheel. I liked the look of 12 spokes, so I used six skewers. Trim off the points of the skewers so there are no tapered ends and then measure the length you need. There's a perfect little edge on the back of the mirror for the spokes to rest on so it was easy to glue them in. The first skewer I kept whole but I found it easier to cut the remaining skewers in half and place them evenly around the wheel starting with the spokes that are perpendicular to the first and then filling in from there. Next, I cut a disc out of foam board, but you could use cardboard or anything you have on hand. I glued it down on the front and then flipped it over and put a generous amount of hot glue on the back to hold the spokes in place. Next, it's time to add paint. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Crimson, which is available at Walmart. That's just what I had on hand, but regular acrylic craft paint would work fine here too. You could even paint the wheel brown or black to look vintage or another color that fits with your decor. I just went with red because that fits with our holiday decor this year. I did just one coat on the back, but two on the front. Next, I mixed some black acrylic paint with a little water and used it almost like a stain where I brushed it on and then rubbed it off. This gave the wheel a nice weathered look. Finally, it's time to add embellishments. I just used a cut of the evergreen garland from Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the edge through the spokes around half of the wheel. Then I used some white berry garland and some gold berry garland and wrapped them around in the same fashion. Then I was a little bit on the fence about a bow because I didn't feel like it necessarily needed it, but in the end decided on a small burlap bow to complete the look. And here he is. I know I always say this, but I just love how he turned out. He's a little bit small to use as a wreath on his own, but I thought he'd look nice in a little vignette on my bathroom counter. I added a couple candles with burlap and red ribbon and a floral sprig to complete the look. For the second project, you'll need one of the larger round wire wreath forms, a men's scarf, a 3D tinsel tree, burlap ribbon, white berry garland, jute twine, and a star tree topper. Dollar Tree has some great fabric right now. There are a ton of different scarf designs and really fun colors. I was going for more of a traditional farmhouse look, so I picked this green and white plaid. I made strips using just the part with the thin white stripes. This ensured that the pattern looked the same the whole way around the wreath. Because I used only one part of the pattern, I needed two scarves. You could definitely cover the whole wreath using just one scarf, but if you're going to do that, I would recommend using shorter strips and switching off so that it looks more cohesive.
Next, I removed the gold tinsel from the tree form and cut it in half. The form didn't go all the way around at the top, so here you see me doing surgery to add a side post to each end. This helps me have something to glue the ribbon to. And now I'm gluing ribbon around at a slight diagonal. I found that it worked better to use pieces just around the front as opposed to wrapping it all the way around the tree. Once I got to the bottom, I glued the bottom piece first and then added the piece above it to overlap. This gave it a more finished look. Next, I'm trimming the tree with some of the white berry garland. It's the perfect, simple accompaniment. It was a little tricky to attach the tree to the wreath. What I ended up doing is threading a piece of floral wire through some burlap ribbon I planned to use for the hanger. Then I twisted the floral wire tightly around the top of the tree. After that I glued the burlap around the wreath. This worked well and the wire will be covered in the end so it doesn't have to look pretty. At the bottom, I glued jute twine to each side of the tree in the back and wrapped the wreath with the twine. The tree was nice and snug after that. Now for the final embellishment, the star on top. I liked the size of the star tree topper from Dollar Tree, but not the glitter part. So I solved that easily with white chalk paint. Then I added definition to the raised lines with gold acrylic craft paint and used hot glue to attach it. And here she is. I love how she looks on our front door. The green and winter whites go great with the burlap and jute twine for the perfect farmhouse look. For the final project today, you'll need a square stretched canvas frame. This one is eight and a half inches. One of the small wreath forms that come in a pack of two, paint, ribbon, and embellishments of your choosing. We're going to create a reverse canvas, so I start out by removing the canvas from the frame. We're basically going to turn the canvas around so that the frame will show. You can take out the staples if you wish, but I found it easiest to cut the canvas off with an X-Acto knife. Before reattaching the frame, I painted the pieces separately. I feel like I should mention that I was a little disappointed to discover that the frame wasn't real wood because most of the canvases at Dollar Tree are. So instead of just staining it, I had to first paint the frame white. Then I used antique wax to make it look like wood. I used a dry brush to brush on the wax, then wiped it off with a rag. I wanted it to have a little bit of a gray tone, so afterward I dry brushed on some granite gray acrylic paint and used the same technique that I used with the wax by wiping it off. I decided to paint the back of the canvas because it was already white and it would only take one coat. So the original picture will show on the back of this piece. I'm fine with this because it's just for our own personal decoration, but it could easily be covered with cardstock for a more finished look. I hot glued the frame and stuck it down in place where I liked it. After that, I cut off the excess canvas around the edges, then used a couple staples on the back for a firmer hold. I used wire cutters to remove the smallest ring from the wreath form. There are notches where it attached to the form, but I'm going to cover one with ribbon at the top and the other two will be covered with florals at the bottom, so they won't show later. Attach the ring to the canvas by looping around a small cut of ribbon and securing it with glue. 
Now for adding the writing. Some people may be able to freehand, but I have seriously terrible handwriting. So I just used the Word Swag app that I've mentioned previously to create the saying I wanted in a nice clean font and literally traced it off my phone onto paper. Then I used carbon transfer paper to transfer it to the canvas. This tracing paper from Arteza is perfect for lefties like me. I have a tendency to drag my hand and this is the first paper that hasn't resulted in smudges. I used red sharpie and the carbon does show through some so if you don't like that just use black sharpie or if you have a steadier hand than me you could use actual paint. The final embellishments are some greenery and berries that I got from Joanne Fabrics last week on buy one get two free, but Dollar Tree has lots of great holiday florals as well. The light colored greenery and berries go great with this piece. And here it is. I just love how this turned out. Like the wagon wheel, this could be hung on a wall, but I like it here on my kitchen counter. I love how simple and clean it is and it goes well with our neutral kitchen. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification button so you will be notified when I upload future videos. I have lots of additional holiday projects in the works as well as some great pieces that will help you transition from the holidays to regular old winter decor. So keep your eye out for those. See you next time. Bye!